Lightroom, Photoshop and all the other photo editors are complicated applications. I'm not complaining, I genuinely love the useful editing tools that we have at our disposal these days. However, that doesn't mean I'm not always on the lookout for ways to simplify and speed up the editing process. The problem is that some keyboard shortcuts require a concept pianist's finger dexterity to pull off successfully and can be difficult to remember. Compound that with the fact that the shortcuts are different in each application and you inevitably find yourself applying a Gaussian blur and a curves adjustment layer when all you meant to do was enable the rulers. There's a solution to all of this and it's called the Stream Deck. This Christmas, probably because I'm an old bastard who's impossible to buy a gift for, I've got more vouchers than usual. And after being inspired by some videos here on YouTube, I decided to pull those vouchers together and splash out on an Elgato Stream Deck Mark II. Set me back the princely sum of 239 Australian dollars. The Stream Deck is a fully customizable external button deck with 15 LCD buttons on it. Those buttons can be configured in any way you like and can be used for a surprisingly varied range of tasks. There's still a perception that the Stream Deck is just for Twitch streamers begging for subs on their Minecraft feeds. In fact, when I told my 20 year old son that I'd got one, he looked confused and asked me if I was planning on live streaming my nightly potty mouth Team Fortress 2 scrims. But the truth is that the Stream Deck can be put to far more use than flicking subscriber graphics onto OBS video feeds. I bought mine to simplify editing photos in Photoshop and Lightroom and editing videos in Final Cut Pro, but I've discovered it's a flexible bit of kit that lends itself well to all sorts of tasks. At its most basic, you can simply use the Stream Deck as a funky looking app launcher. Hey guys, here's the basic layout of my Stream Deck. I've got some basic app shortcuts here. Um, you know, Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop and everything. Very simple little hotkey setup on those. And I can of course put all the custom icons in there so they look nice and you don't have to use the stock ones. You can put any icon you like in there. And you can see down the bottom left, I have a special folder just full of the Adobe suite. So every single one of the Adobe apps is in there, which is quite nice. Got my web browsers in there and I've got all the other various photo apps that I use in that other folder, which is pretty neat already. So, yep, on a basic level, the Stream Deck's a great and intuitive little app launcher. But where the device really shines is with profiles. By installing the Elgato Stream Deck app, you can set up profiles for any application installed on your PC or Mac, and which are automatically activated when you switch to the app. Here's how my Stream Deck's profile looks for Adobe Lightroom Classic. So here is the entry section of my little Lightroom profile that I've set up, which gets me into the various sections of Lightroom. So for instance, I can click on the develop tab. Oh, we're in develop at the moment. Let's go into library. If I click that, you can see we click straight over to that and then go back to develop tab if I want. I've also got the grid button, which fires up the, um, the thumbnails on my second monitor. And then I've got the organizational stuff, you know, rating images and giving them star ratings and giving them color flags in one of these screens. And I've got all my processing stuff in this one. One. So let's, we're in the develop tab. Let's go to, back to library, going to organize. Okay. Here I've got all my basics. So I don't, if something goes under three stars for me, I tend to delete it if it's that bad. So for me, I've got three, four, and five star rating. Anything less than that, that gets a reject button over here. And which means that I do a sweep at the end and delete all the photos that I don't want. I can also do stuff like just 
flagging a photograph as a pic uh, and I can unflag it as well. If I'm just going through quickly and adding stuff to create a collection because I want to export or something, I've got the quick collection button, which is the B on the, the normal keyboard. I can press that and stick things in a quick collection. And I've also got some color flags here. So for instance, if I press red on that, you can see it says set label to red pretty simple huh so let's go back to the home screen and go into the develop module and we'll go into this process section so here you can see i've got a couple of external editors set up i can just go straight into photoshop or luminar neo i've got export I've got my uh, transfer, the develop settings from between photos, turn on the before and after. Uh, this skips through the various sliders. And honestly, it's not terribly useful. It's a kind of cumbersome way of doing it because you have to kind of cycle all the way up and down. You can't go directly to anything, obviously. Not the most useful tool in the grand scheme of things. We've got crop tool, we've got the brush resizing, and uh, honestly, the develop side of uh, the Stream Deck for Lightroom isn't terribly useful. Pretty neat, huh? Now, there's no getting around the fact that setting up the Stream Deck is a slow process, but at least you only have to do it once. The vast majority of the editing buttons I've set up on my Stream Deck are very simple hotkeys. And here's how you set those hotkeys up. So here's how you configure a hotkey for your Stream Deck. So here I am in Adobe Photoshop, and let's say we've got a particularly convoluted shortcut here, which is Command-Shift-Option-L for auto contrast. Not anything I'd ever use, but still, we'll get it set up. So Command-Shift-Option-L. So what we need to do is open the Elgato configuration software, which is right here. And then all we need to do is drag a hotkey option, which you can see here, onto a spare position on the Stream Deck. And those keys were Command, Shift, Option, and L. And that's now set up to do auto contrast. And I can give that a name. And I can also give it a special icon if I want. I'll just choose on it random, just for the sake of speeding things up a little bit. Let's just stick that one in there. There we go. So that's now set up. And if I now just close that. So now if I press the hotkey on my Stream Deck, it does auto contrast for me and you can see if we go to undo there it is it did the action my stream deck setup is still a work in progress as i use the device i tweak settings so that they work better with my particular workflow the big question is whether or not the device has made importing managing and editing my photographs in lightroom faster and easier and the answer is a qualified yes on all those counts. What I found is that, particularly for Lightroom, having single click buttons is not actually that useful for editing raw photos. The reason for this is that a lot of editing in Lightroom is jumping between sliders that you have to drag one way or the other. The problem is there's no way of directly hotkeying to a specific slider, so you have to cycle through them sequentially or manually select them. Having one touch buttons to external editors is neat and being able to quickly move between modules is nice too, but that's about it. Where the Stream Deck has proved much more beneficial is during that initial import and assessment process. Flagging, unflagging, stacking and rejecting photos is fast and simple. Ditto, giving photos a star rating and an organizational label. I can quickly flick through all of the photos from a shoot and have them tagged and flagged in no time at all. So Lightroom with a Stream Deck is a mixed bag, but when it comes to Photoshop, it's a different story. Photoshop is far more useful when you learn to drive it using hotkeys, but there are so many key combinations that most people don't go far beyond the basics, such as Command or Control J to duplicate a layer. Pretty much every Photoshop menu item, tool and panel has a default hotkey 
or can be given one. After a bit of experimentation, I did the tools I used most on the main page of the profile and then added a couple of sneaky subfolders. So here we have my Photoshop setup. As it stands at the moment, these things are evolving and I switch things around as I discover I don't use some things and some things I would like to have in here. But for instance, I've got my eyedropper set up on this button here. So I press that and I just move over. I can sample the colors. My crop tool, you know, if I wanted to resize the image and I've also got some other folders down here. So this one, for instance, has all my external photo editors. So if I wanted to jump off into Luminar Neo, for instance, I just press that button or into my Topaz AI uh, editing tools there. And I've also got some filters that I use a fair bit set up. So for instance, if I want to use the camera raw filter in Photoshop, I just press there and up it pops on the screen. It's pretty neat. And the good thing is that this is all a profile, which means that Stream Deck automatically detects when I'm using Photoshop and switches to this. I don't have to call this up or search around for it in the menu. It just appears, all these icons. That's a pretty friction-free setup. It's really quite nice. But the app that has benefited most from the Stream Deck is actually my video editing software, Final Cut Pro X. Having buttons makes editing far quicker than standard keyboard hotkeys, and I can cluster the most useful ones together. When I first set up my Stream Deck, I used the supplied stand for everything, but when I was editing videos, I started getting really nasty cramps in my hand down here along my thumb because the deck was in continual use. And so now I pop the stand off and lay it flat for things like Final Cut. Pro edits. I bought my Stream Deck with quite specific purposes in mind, but it's such a flexible bit of hardware that the use case has expanded considerably. It's super easy to set up and using multi-actions, it's possible to create sophisticated chains of actions that do a sequential list of actions at the press of one single button. Since you can assign Photoshop actions to hotkeys as well, you can create sophisticated and nuanced editing sequences turning numerous steps into one single press of a button. With the Elgato software running in the background, the device will switch profiles automatically for each application you've set up, making a friction-free peripheral. In fact, the only major issue I have with the Stream Deck is that some applications work best with the device flat and some with it in the stand. And so I sometimes find myself switching it out several times a day. It's not a biggie, but it is a minor annoyance. With a large and ever expanding library of plugins, fully configurable LCD buttons and an open-ended software architecture, the Stream Deck can remain a part of my office setup for some time to come. So if you've got a collection of Christmas vouchers lying around and you're looking for something to spend them on, I can heartily recommend the Stream Deck Mark II. All righty guys, that'll do us for this video. Have you got a Stream Deck Mark II or perhaps one of the other models that Elgato have in the range, such as the Stream Deck XL or Stream Deck Plus? Let me know down in the comments section below as to how you use your Stream Deck. If you enjoyed this little video, please give us a like. And if you'd like to see other drone and photography related content in your feed, hit the old subscribe button with the hotkey of your choice. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.